again we are back with the lecture number 23 of microbiology lecture series and this will be regarding the virus growth cycle and particularly the famous lytic and lysogenic cycle so we are going to talk about the lytic cycle the lysogenic cycle of bacteriophage and we are also going to talk about the differences between lytic and lysogenic cycle in details so if you want to know about all this this video is just for you stay tuned and watch this lecture now the big question is how viruses uh, replicate <coughs> inside the host cell we know viruses are obligate intracellular parasite they always hijack the host cell machinery and can use that they can use the host cells own uh, enzymes for the for uh, the process of protein synthesis and also for its own dna replication or rna replication so very limited number of gene encode proteins for capsid formation viral nucleic acid and replication and movement of virus in and out of the cell so these are the three major components that is required by the virus so ultimately once they hijack the host cell machinery then they first replicate their genetic component and they can also use the enzymes of hosts to help in producing capsid proteins and once the dna is or rna whatever genetic material it is whenever the genetic material is ready the capsomeres are ready the capsomeres start arranging themselves surrounding uh, the genetic material inside and once the process is done then they simply produces enzymes that initiate the process of i mean uh, they simply guide the enzymes of host to initiate the process of viral particle release and generally the viruses are much clever in terms of activi uh, activation inside the host you know once uh, <clears throat> the viruses can only go outside of the host while they build huge number of viruses inside the host not like one virus is built and the virus one particle is cleaved out you know inside the host cell when tons of virus particles are built with their nucleic acid inside then only they burst that host cell open and all their components will be released outside okay now viruses can cause severe damages to the host cell the namingly three damages one some animal viruses enter the host cell and permanently alter its genetic material that results in cancer or we call it transformation of those normal cell into a cancerous cell and these are generally known as a virus induced cancer okay hsv is an example for that okay and uh, hpv can be also a part of that okay transforming cells have an increased uh, rate of growth and alteration in chromosomes and the capacity to divide for infinite time periods resulting in tumors so again somehow the viruses can alter how the specific gene is read and as they alter the pattern of gene reading that may lead to the production of altered proteins that may lead to formation of cancerous cell and third thing mammalian viruses capable of initiating tumors and they are known as oncoviruses for example papilloma virus actually it's not hsv it's mostly hpv human papilloma virus associated with cervical cancer and genital warts and there are epstein barr virus e b v associated with burkitt's lymphoma in both the occasion burkitt's lymphoma as well as the papilloma virus causing cervical cancer they alter uh, the genetic reading frame and the profile as a result of which as a result of which a normal cell is turned into a cancerous cell now multiplication cycle in bacteriophages how exactly the bacteriophage involved in multiplication bacteriophages are viruses that infect bacteria so most widely studied bacteriophage are those one which in, in infect escherichia coli okay and multiplication goes through similar stages like as an animal virus only the nucleic acid enters the cytoplasm 
uncoating is not necessary in this occasion so it's like a injection only the nucleic acid is ingested inside the bacteria like inside the host in this case e coli and then uh, that genetic material hijack the host cell machinery and can finally cause uh, the burst open of e coli and and remove releasing all the viral components bacteriophage components outside so they can be involved in two different type of cycle lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle lytic cycle is the cycle where after production of sufficient bacteriophage this bacteriophage will crack open the host cell like e coli and goes outside to infect another healthy host while in lysogenic cycle the genetic component of the bacteriophage is incorporated and recombined with the bacterial genome and they can stay there for several generations for certain period of time this phase is known as lysogenic phase because in this phase uh, the this phage is not that virulent the phage is not killing the host the phage is not producing further phage particle but lysogenic phase is not constant because lysogenic phase needs to be converted into lytic phase and the phage particles eventually will crack open the host cell and will come out the steps in phage replication goes starting from adsorption binding of a virus to specific molecules on the host cell then second step is penetration genome enters into the host cell and for this entry and penetration the phage structure helps because if you look at the phage structure it has that seed the contractile seed it's like the injection like a syringe it's like a tunnel through which the genetic material is pushed inside the bacterial cell then the third step is replication the viral components are produced the fourth step is assembly while the viral components like the proteins for uh, the viral phage head is produced and also the the structures of collar and contractile seed everything is produced and they start assembling and after the assembling you know during the time of assembling the the genetic material is already replicated so the genetic material is in a, a captured inside the the phage head and the collar the contractile seed the basal plate and the tail fibers everything is ready okay and then afterwards the fifth stage is maturation completion of viral formation once the complete viral particles are formed then the last and final sixth stage lysis and release then the phage uh, will cleave uh, the host cell open and will come out so this is known as a lytic cycle a lytic phase of bacteriophage so you can see this is an example of bacteriophage schematic drawing okay so let me also show you the steps in details you can see that this is a t4 bacteriophage and you can see that this bacteriophage of its zoomed structure capsid contractile seed base plate and the tail fibers everything is out there adsorption attachment is done and then injection of the genetic material done which is known as penetration though third step biosynthesis all the components are synthesized genetic material synthesized uh, you know replicated uh, contractile ring synthesized capsid synthesized everything is synthesized by hijacking the host cell machinery and then maturation means all the components are assembled into what is known as virions now once the virions are ready then the release host cell lysis and they'll they'll crack the host cell the cell membrane will be cleaved and the host cell will be released and you know assembly begins from the basal plate where well, the ring and tail is attached then on top of the tail another protein components that can cause the contractile feature is added then capsid inside of which dna is inserted and the dna containing capsid is attached and at the end the tail fibers are assembled okay 
Now the contrast between the two different type of cycle, lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle. The lytic is known as a virulent state. Okay, phages cause lysis and the death of the host cell in this cycle. While lysogenic cycle is known as a temperate cycle. So the bacteriophage involved with lysogenic cycle are known as temperate phage. The phage DNA incorporated into host DNA, we call it prophage. So instead of injecting the phage DNA inside the host, you know they will in this case also inject the DNA inside the host but instead of hijacking the host cell machinery and producing the phage particles this DNA or genetic material gets incorporated with the bacterial chromosome itself so let's assume that this is a bacterial chromosome this is the phage phage or phage DNA and <clears throat> This is the bacterial cell inside of which we have this bacterial chromosome and phage DNA. So this com composition of bacterial chromosome and phage DNA combined are known as prophage. Okay, so <clears throat> then it can remain as a prophage for long period of time. When the environment is not in favor of lytic phase, they follow this lysogenic or temperate cycle. But when the environment is in the favor of lysis then there is a phage conversion in the phage conversion this temperate phage convert from lysogenic phase into a lytic phase and there is this hugely complicated complex molecular mechanism regulates the process of lytic lysogenic conversion animation of which will be discussed later i'll show you an animation regarding the process in details but once the conversion is mediated then those phage particles again are produced and then they will lyse the cell open they will come out okay and then this is associated with the term specialized transduction okay so we'll talk about what is specialized transduction in bacterial genetics we know <coughs> that if the virus particle or phage particle follows lytic cycle we call it generalized transduction but if it follows uh, lysogenic cycle we call it specialized transduction and why we are calling it differently I'll show you that again in the bacterial genetics class so in this picture you can clearly see the lytics as well as lysogenic cycle in two different sites the lytic cycle simple the phage attachment insertion of genetic material making multiple copies of phage particle crack the cell open lysis come out of the phage while lysogenic phase first step is common adsorption and then release of the genetic component inside the host but then the second step is totally different incorporation of phage DNA or phage genetic material with that of the bacterial genetic material and prophage is originated and then the f bacteria can replicate and the more the bacteria can divide with binary fission uh, the chance of spreading that phage DNA even increases by several fold so this is not only uh, waiting for a perfect time for lytic cycle but also a strategy of bacteriophage to increase the chance of host range and host uh, attack uh, so that the more the bacterial cell divides the more they can infect okay so I believe you understood the process of lytic and lysogenic cycle and the differences between the two if you find this lecture helpful please do one favor hit that like button hit that subscribe button and, and click that bell icon so that uh, we grow along with you and you also get the benefit of the knowledge that we share through our channel and please share this video with your friends if you like it thank you